Welcome to the media lab of our Université Catholique de Lille. Uh, we're in the context of our master class welcoming uh, Professor uh, Justin Cooks, um, who is coming all the way from Paris um, in our media master class for um, Global Actors for Peace. Uh, we just had this morning in a conference with uh, Professor Cooks uh, talking about um, recognition and uh, the transformation of conflict. Um, welcome, Mr. Dustin Cook. Thank um, you for welcoming me. Your conference this morning was really interesting, and we wanted to ask you some question about it, um, specifically about um, the recognition um, and its uh, role in um, transform transform transformation and peace. Um, we just wanted to ask uh, with Theo. Uh, Theo is here also, and he was in the conference too. Uh, we had questions about it, um, so thank you for being here this morning. That's a great pleasure. Well, I think uh, recognition theory uh, in a large sense uh, is interesting because it teaches us that uh, questions of recognition, uh, the act of recognizing, or forms of misrecognition can be just as much causes of conflict or as peace um, as some of the uh, historical and classical uh, schools of thought, uh, notably security interests or economic interests. Um, so I think they go very far. Uh, and they can even be integrated into some of these more tangible issues. And mm -hmm. the notion of territory is one that uh, strikes me as a good example. Uh, you have territory, which can represent an economic uh, an interest, mm -hmm. um, uh, an important zone of commerce, or a strategic territory that could be rich in natural resources. Um, but also, I think we, we have a tendency to forget that territory uh, represents a very valuable um, symbolic interest, where uh, people attach identity to territory. Yes. And a number of examples come to mind, with whether it be the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, mm -hmm. but also some of our frozen conflicts that we have today uh, between Georgia, South Ossetia, Abkhazia, Moldova, Prenestrovia, uh, Azerbaijan, and nagorno karabakh and Armenia, yeah. uh, and even Kosovo, where the Serbs believe that the, the Kosovo is the, uh, the cradle of their civilization. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we also talked about how um, for example, non-recognition could be an example of stability um, and maybe avoiding conflict. So what do you think about um, that um, side of the spectrum, for example? Because we nowadays have a lot of, for example, civil wars um, that um, for populations that claim recognition and it, it creates wars. So what do you think about the other uh, tactic, the other technique of states um, that choose non-recognition uh, for stability. For example, France does that. Well, I, it's a very interesting question because uh, misrecognition is typically construed as a major source of tension and conflict between states or within states. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's true that historically states are very reluctant to recognize the separatist movements mm -hmm. um, because of uh, the fear of national unity, because of economic concerns. It is a question of national security at the end of the day. So whenever a state uh, decides where a, a territory or a people aspiring for recognition uh, seeks to uh, declare itself independent, uh, we can bet more or less that uh, the metropolitan states uh, will give a negative response to that. Mm -hmm. um, now, th this can also be well, this can be construed as a form of instability. But uh, I, I do believe that there are a few states around the world that are uh, that have always uh, desired to be recognized, but sure. at the end of the day, may prefer to be unrecognized because sure. there are a number of economic and security benefits, uh, yeah. notably for their leader. Yeah. So, so what you're saying that re recognition must be well balanced in order to promote peace, rather that if, if we have too much recognition, for instance, then we'll have more tension, but if we have well-balanced recognition, then we'll have more chance to have peace. Uh, indeed, uh, recognition uh, is not the, 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 the end game of every single conflictual situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be implemented uh, progressively. It needs to deal with questions of identity, mm -hmm. uh, not just questions of pure statehood and status, yeah. uh, questions of sovereignty. Uh, it needs to recognize minority rights, forms of inclusion, uh, so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in that way, it plays an important role. But uh, there can be a point in a conflict where recognition kind of runs its course. And uh, once again, some of these frozen conflicts come to mind, that if a state is unwilling to uh, recognize fully mm -hmm. uh, a de facto state residing within their territory, then we can see that recognition has kind of run its course. But beyond the statehood question, once again, I think if you remain on the questions of identity and in, in terms of, of, of social progress and social justice between people, then 
it can go beyond international law. And this sociological process is very important, I think, for conflict transformation. Yeah. Don't you think that recognition is, um, is a slow process because it has to last for years? And aren't you afraid that the head of states are, for instance, I'm thinking about the Israel-Palestine, well, with Bill Clinton at the beginning that tried to start the threat, the, the, there were good relations between Israel and Palestine at some moment in the late 90s. But after that, this process became it became void because now the tensions are back because of the lack of recognition. Yes, so this is an excellent remark you make. Um, and it's not just the case with recognition in itself. It needs to be long, it needs to be gradual because peace cannot be forced. Uh, it is not purely the absence of war mm -hmm. or, or negative peace because two entities have been, are deterring each other from resorting to war. Uh, it has to be positive, it has to be durable, it has to be sustainable. Um, so it's, it's an excellent remark in that sense and uh, something I think that should, you know, needs to be developed further. Yeah, sure. We also talked about transforming peace and how we could, um, by recognition uh, or by other means, um, go from peacekeeping or peacemaking to peace building, actually, and, mm -hmm. and, and having a sustainable peace. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your thoughts on, on how to achieve that maybe in the future? Because right now we witness some movements of the UN who are trying to really build peace from, from bottom up. As, as you said in your conference. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think we have to be realistic. Uh, you know, peace cannot be achieved, obviously, through the signature of a ceasefire agreement or through a, a, a declar simple declaration. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to come from the top down, but also from the bottom up, mm -hmm. uh, because it's not just the, uh, because your leaders have uh, declared peace that uh, our peoples are in peace. So you need to cultivate mutual understanding. Uh, mutual respect between peoples, uh, whether they're between countries or within a country. You need to mm -hmm. uh, respect uh, people's rights, uh, their particular uh, identity aspects, uh, through whether it's a question of language, whether it's culture, or the recognition of history, traumatic events, for yeah. example, also go a long, long way. But yes, patience is necessary, and that is our shortcoming uh, in, in the international arena, is that our leaders are not patient, and they want to seek an agreement very soon, very quickly, yeah. and move on to the next issue. Yeah. So you think there is too much, uh, too much legal, like we are too much legal, we think we sign a paper and that's all, but now we, you think that we need an understanding of, this, of the other culture of the other people for, in order for the recognition to bring peace. Indeed, and I think it, most practitioners and academics uh, understand that is the case. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is, you know, what is happening in our protracted conflicts, our cl conflicts that have lasted for decades and decades and decades and have yet to find any finality uh, for conflicts that remain in this stage of conflict management mm -hmm. and have yet to go to a resolution process. Uh, they're, they're difficultly transformed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cook. Thank you, too. I'm Yasmin, and you were watching the Media Lab of our masterclass, Global Actors for Peace.